Hi, and welcome to RetroEric. Today, we are going to test this Gravis Ultrasound plug and play replica made by David Larson. As a first time user of the Gravis Ultrasound plug and play, I have to ask you can you handle a Gravis Ultrasound plug and play? Can you? It was a steep learning curve for me, so that is why this video is not a history lesson of the Gravis Ultrasound. Instead, I will focus on how you can get your Gravis Ultrasound plug and play to work. And lastly, why every retro enthusiast should have one. Stay with me. But first, some perspective. Back in the 90s, when the Gus first came out, I was still using my Sound Blaster Pro 2. A few of my friends, all previous Amiga users, bought the Gravis Ultrasound when it came out. The sound quality was at the time out of this world. This is the card from David Larson. It looks so cool. And of course, it's in red, just like the original Gus. Basically, this is a replicate of the Gravis Ultrasound plug and play from 1995. He has done some uh, cost reducing changes compared to the original GUS plug and play. First, there is no CD ROM header and no power for the microphone. Things you would probably never use anyway. While the original GUS PMP had two slots for 30 pin SIMs, this card has one 72 pin SIM slot, which is easy to come by these days. It comes with no RAM, but you can buy a 72 pin SIM from David, or you can provide your own. The card supports up to 16 megabytes, but according to my research, there is probably nothing out there using more than 4 megabytes. If I'm wrong, please let me know down in the descriptions. This is also a good time for me to tell you to subscribe to my channel. If you love retro sound devices, this is the channel for you. When weathering the card, you can choose a plastic or metal bracket. Both are 3D printed, and I have to say that the 3D printed metal bracket looks really good. It's the first time I've actually had something 3D printed in metal. The original Gravis Ultrasound came out in 1992, and the plug and play version came out in 1995. In 95, Windows had just uh, come out. But hardly any games used Windows, and at least not Windows 95 and the GUS. When doing research for this video, I could not find one single game supporting the GUS that only worked on Windows 95. My conclusion is therefore that the GUS is a card for the DOS area. And for that reason, I'm using my AST Advantage 486, which I have upgraded with a Pentium Overdrive at 83 MHz. For our testing today, we will be using the Gravis Ultrasound plug and play as the only sound card in the computer. I have to say, installing the drivers as a GUS newbie, never owning a GUS card before, I had a steep learning curve. First of all, Gravis Ultrasound and Gravis Ultrasound plug and play is not the same. Most games made for the GUS does not work out of the box on the Gravis Ultrasound plug and play. This is not a fault of David Larson, but it's how the original GUS plug and play was designed. The quick way of installing the GUS plug and play is to use Unisound. If you don't know Unisound, it is a utility to initialize most DOS plug and play sound cards out there. It does not use any memory and it works on 8086 and above. If the game or demo supports GUS plug and play, Unisound is all you need. To increase compatibility and to make Unisound use your settings, you should add set ultrasound environment variables in your auto exec bat. 
This is because some games and demo needs this. And uh, one of these uh, programs that needs the variable is uh, Inertia Player. Let's uh, listen to some music. Let's uh, try another game. Let's uh, try Doom. Uh, no music, only effects. This is where it gets challenging to use the GUS. Just like the original GUS, we need to install a patch set to get music to work with most games. The original patches came on the original CD-ROM for the plug-and-play version. But the community is also developing new patch sets. But that is not in the scope of this video. You also need the 4 MB patch set specifically made for the plug-and-play version. You need Ultramid and uh, Mega EM for some Blaster emulation. And optionally, you may want to use the EEPROM tools. For help to understand how the GUS works, I reached out to Karopi at Vogons.org. He pointed me towards his own solution to make the GUS installation easier. Karopi has made a GUS driver package that contains almost everything we need in one easy zip file. To install it, you unzip it to UltraSND in the root of your C drive and start ultrasound.bat from your autoexec.bat. Much better. So, let's see what's uh, in this uh, driver package from Keropi. This uh, driver package contains several critical tools to get your GUS plug and play working. First, it has the ultrasound driver, basically the same as the Uni Sound. Second, we have the instrument patch set designed for the original Gravis ultrasound. Third, we have the 4 MB patch set designed for the Gravis Ultrasound plug and play sound card with 4 MB of RAM. And fourth, we have the Ultra Mid driver. We will take a closer look at that soon. What we lack to make this package complete is the fifth and last component, Mega EM. Mega EM gives us Sound Blaster emulation. More on that soon. One more thing not mentioned in this list is PrepGame. PrepGame is a patch utility. It was designed to address compatibility issues with certain games. By scanning the current directory for a supported game, PrepGame can update them to work with the Gravis Ultrasound plug and play. Some games ask for a driver called UltraMid, as we can see here in Therion 2000. Ultramid is a memory resident driver that gives you support for general MIDI for games that is made for using the Ultramid. There are two tools for Sound Blaster emulation, the IVSBOS and the Mega EM. I will be using the Mega EM. If you have problems with some games, Try using the IVSB OS instead. The Sound Blaster emulation tools also give you general MIDI and MT32 emulation. You can download Mega EM from Wagon Drivers, or you can download my new driver package where everything is included. Mega EM is a Sound Blaster 2.0 emulation, not Sound Blaster Pro. This means mono only. It also means that it will emulate adlib. 
On top of that, it also emulates General MIDI and MT32 and LAPC1. Mega EM combines the older SBOS and UltraMid into one tool to make it a bit easier for us. It requires a 386 or better and a memory manager. So you will get in trouble if your game does not work with the memory manager. I have not tested this myself, but I have read that the SBOS works without a memory manager. By choosing advanced mode, we get more options. The best and easiest is to use the default values. When running Mega EM, we have one more issue. The driver package we downloaded from Keropi was meant for another GUS replica with built-in Sound Blaster capabilities. And therefore, he did not need the Mega EM package. We need to change some settings in the IWINI and in the ultrasound.bat. Basically, we must configure the settings regarding Sound Blaster emulation and adding a set blaster variable. If you want to change these settings yourself, make sure to have the same settings in both IWINI and ultrasound.bat. Let's uh, try Mega Man with Sound Blaster emulation. It's not perfect, far from it. Especially the FM sound is bad. But the digitized uh, sound effects sounds pretty okay, but not stereo. Let's try Monkey Island with AdLib emulation. Terrible, but there's a silver lining. Monkey Island supports Roland MT32 and the Mega EM has a mode for MT32 emulation. Let's try that. much better. This is actually way better sound than we would get with any early Sound Blaster card, because they didn't have an MT32 emulation mode. But it sounds uh, about the same as the MT32 emulation on the AWE32 and the AWE64. Here is a list of games with GUS support. This list also states if the support is natively or via ultra mid Mega EM or through a patch. Also know that some games look for a GUS driver when installing, and only then will it install the necessary files for full GUS support. I urge you to check this list before you start searching the web for a solution for your game. To make your life easier, I made my own driver package. I based it upon Karopi's package and added Mega EM and configured the necessary settings. You only have to download the zip file and extract it in the folder called Ultra SND on the root of your C drive. Back to this uh, GUS replica. I am so glad and grateful for David Larson sending me his GUS replica. As mentioned, I never had one, but always wanted one. Buying an original GUS from eBay is not the viable option, but this replica is absolutely obtainable. As I mentioned, the learning curve was steep, so I made a video that I would like to see, and with some help I was able to make a driver package that will make life easier for everybody with a GUS plug and play. Now I will start exploring more demos and games with GUS support. The sound quality from the GUS is still amazing. This card will give me many hours of joy. If you also dreamed about owning a GUS or you just wanted this extraordinary piece of history, I urge you to get a Gravis Ultrasound. And this GUS is easy to get on Tindy. I would like to thank Future Crew for their wonderful demo that has been running in the background. 
and I would like to thank you, my viewer, for watching. I hope you was entertained and that you learned something. If you did, please let me know by liking and subscribing, and maybe also give me a comment down in the comment section. Thank you for watching.